sometimes it, it takes a little while for people to realize that what they were trying to do wasn't going to work. What they were trying to do mm-hmm. was handpick a general manager who would have been content, who would have been happy, who would have had no problem keeping Joe Judge as head coach. And I think they realized that the universe of people who fell into that category of competent GM would have kept Joe Judge as head coach was shrinking, not growing in light of what we had seen and heard from Joe Judge over the past couple of weeks. And this is a guy who was not thriving under pressure. Stress was not drawing the inner Vince Lombardi out of Joe Judge. It got worse. It got embarrassing. And look, look, if they really want to blow it up, if they really want to blow it up, they're not going far enough. If they really want to blow it up, everybody in the organization that is either named John Mara or related to him by blood or marriage needs to step aside. Get out. Chris Mara, get out. Nephew, whose name I forget, get out. You're not qualified to run a football team. You're not qualified to pick players. You think you are, but you're not. And that's been the common thread with the Giants in recent years. You got ownership that thinks they know what they're doing. They don't. They don't. The Cowboys, Joneses, they figured it out. And you know what? To their credit, they stand out there and say, we're running the show. The Maras, they're pulling the strings behind the scenes. They don't know what they're doing. And the proof is in the last decade. Oh, but we have two Super Bowls. Well, you know what? You won those despite your skills, abilities, or lack thereof. You don't know what you're doing. Your roster is crap. And I almost said the other word. But that's one of the problems. Why are they churning coaches every two years? Because their roster sucks. Their players suck. It's hard to be a good coach when your players suck. Their players suck. And the mayors are part of the problem. And I don't care if they get upset with me. You want to blow it up and you want to start over? Bye-bye. Leave. Or sell the team. Either way, if I'm a Giants fan, I'm at the front of the line saying I'm done with his team until everyone named Mara is out of the operation or they sell the team. I don't know why I care. See, I- I'm all upset again like, on behalf say? of these is fan Friday? bases. What's going on, no, man? You're just, I, I just whoa. Don't, I don't care. What happened? But, but <laughs> I, because here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is, uh, this is what I love and hate about the National Football League. Okay. I love the fact that – You've got, and I said this earlier today, billion-dollar football organizations that are ultimately run by monarchies. They're run Mm -hmm. by families who just pass the equity from generation to generation. You know what happens when you do that? Sooner or later, there's a generation that's like, I don't know what the hell to do with this, but what choice do I have? It's a family business, right? And we're we're, we're making money hand over fist. That's the other side of it. It really doesn't matter if the the roster sucks. It really doesn't matter if they don't get much better. They're still going to make more money than they spend. It's a profitable enterprise, even if your team isn't any good. That's the dirty little secret they never want us to really talk about, but it's the truth. But it infuriates me because after 20 years of being in it, but not really in it, after 20 years of learning and understanding and talking to people and having an idea of how things work, it drives me nuts that there are people that own these teams that have no idea how things work. If an idiot like me can figure out in 20 years how it works, How are these people who have somehow amassed and maintained fortunes, how are they not able to learn the same basic fundamental rules that I have over the last 20 years? Because I'm not dealing with a full deck, and I've figured it out. And yes, I would love love nothing more than to have $10 billion and buy one of these teams and run it into the ground to prove myself completely wrong. It's very easy for me to say it when I don't have to run a team. But the incompetence that I see, it's, it's, it's jarring to me. And, and this is the week that it's on display. This is when the dysfunctional teams step front and center. Bears, Dolphins, Giants, and they basically show us their warts, their ass, that everything that we don't want to see, this is the week we get to see how bad they are and why they are, who they are and what they are, and it just pisses me off because it shouldn't be that way. Every fan base should at least have a basic functioning ownership that either knows what to do to help or what not to do to help. And if the answer is get out of the way, then get out of the way. Maris, on behalf of all Giants fans, I implore you, get out of the way. Do, do I get to speak now or are, we, are you good? I don't, I just don't want to start because you might, I like, you were going, man. Like, I don't know. I, it's just. I stopped for you. <laughs> okay. Go. Well, great. No, no, thank you. I mean, that was pretty uh, epic right there. But, uh, you know, one thing that I would give John Mayer credit for 
in that press conference, which actually they did uh, put up on YouTube once, I guess, it had been approved by, you know, the right <laughs> approval decision makers. So whatever it was. So I got to see some, I guess, some of the answers, if not all of them. But he was saying that, you know, I haven't given fans any reason to believe that we're going to get this right this time, which, you know, I give him a little bit of credit for that. He really hasn't, especially with these last few regimes that just really have not been very good. But the other thing that he talked about, and this is basically gets to the heart of what you were saying, is he really seemed to take issue with the suggestion that his family, you know, himself and the other members of the family that are really heavily involved in the Giants organization need to get out of the way. It's basically as if he was saying that, you know, I'm, I don't believe in nepotism or like there's no, you know, nepotism. Oh, God, here give me a break. I'm, I know, Mike, but that's what he said. It's basically what he said, and he didn't say that verbatim, but that's really what he was talking about because he didn't like these questions that kept coming up about, like, well, why is Chris Mayer in the room if he's not really one of these big decision makers? And he's like, well, he's in the room because I trust him. And then he goes, oh, well, for whatever reason, you guys just keep asking me about this, and it's a media creation that we're in the way and all of this. So that would basically be his response to what you're saying is that everybody who is in the family that is also in the organization has worked their way up. All right. So whether that's true, whether, you know, they can be trusted talent evaluators, that's maybe not for me to decide. I mean, I think the proof is in the pudding right now that the giants not been a very good organization, you know, and not been really good at winning football games in a while. So that I guess is the proof right there. The, the, Here's the reality. Now, and, and I think this is one of the reasons why nepotism is so rampant in coaching in the NFL, and there are various reasons for it. And Kalen Kaler of Defector had a great item about it recently yeah. that I've been flagging and wanting to write about at PFT. There's a chapter about it, by the way, in Playmakers, a, an advanced copy of which Miles has, and I'm sure he's read the nepotism chapter. But one of the reasons for nepotism is dads are absentees when their their kids are growing up. And they're, they're never around. So when kid grows up and decides to get into coaching, it's a great way to make up for lost time because you saw all of a sudden you're spending 20 hours a day together. But one of the other reasons I think nepotism happens among coaches, it necessarily happens among ownership. But it's okay if it happens among ownership as it relates to owning the team because somebody in the family's got to run the thing. Somebody in the family's got to run it. This is a business that has been created, purchased, whatever, by one person in the family, and that person's eventually going to die and if it's going to stay in the family, somebody else has to step up. But there's a line you don't want to cross when you start throwing out titles that aren't warranted. And to the extent John Mara is going to say we don't have undue influence over personnel, his brother Chris's title is senior vice president, comma, player personnel. How right. can you say that you don't have undue influence over player personnel when your brother – is the senior vice president of player personnel and your nephew Tim McDonnell is the co-director of player personnel along with Mark Kantz who's been doing this forever and is a real football person not somebody who just happened to be born to the right family at the right time and grew up and realized hey we own a football team it's kind of cool I kind of like it it's more fun than working for a living I play Madden I think I can figure this out. So what he uh, it's infuriating. Like it's infuriating. Work their way up. I, I know. And it is infuriating. But like that, the, the response to what you just said, and that was really asked in that presser, was those guys all worked their way up and they don't have undue influence, even though as he was just saying, like, I, I know, I know, but I'm just telling you what he said in response to it. I, you know, just to. Oh, I know. I'm not, I'm not saying you're lying to you're me. Not, I'm not saying you're lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I think you're just you know on one about the whole situation today so I don't know I just it's I, it, it is what it is but like as you're saying you know these billionaires they come into these teams and some of them figure out they don't want to do it like with the Browns and Randy Lerner he was so incompetent and yet he kept that team for so long right until he sold it to Jimmy Haslam who also was pretty incompetent until they finally kind of got it right here it seems like at least in terms of competence and football knowledge with Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski but like it just I think to your point it, it's just that you know like somebody's got to run this thing but it depends on can you be the kind of person who runs it but also understands that football people have to actually be decision makers and have the most influence on what the football decisions are because they know what they're doing and you probably don't 
Here, here's the best example I can think of, and it's not very good, but I'm going to use it anyway because it popped into my head. That's your okay. show. Owning a football team or, you know, operating a TV show, you, you have a lot of leeway, you have a lot of discretion. There's a lot of stuff you can do. For example, if you reach a certain amount of financial wealth, you can go buy a Ferrari, and it's your Ferrari, and you can do whatever the hell you please to that Ferrari. You can run it on a track. You can take it on rocky terrain. You can run it into the ground. You can put cheap gasoline in it. You can not replace the windshield wipers when they need to be replaced. You can you can screw up the clutch if you want to. It's your, it's your car. You can do whatever the hell you want to it. It's your prerogative. And, and a football team is like a Ferrari. But the difference is the Ferrari that is the football team is the pride and is the rallying point for thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in your community and beyond. It carries the name of the community. So to me, there is a much more sacred bond and responsibility than to say, hey, you know what? I own this thing. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do to it. No, no. And that's what upsets me, because I believe every fan base in the National Football League deserves to have owners who will not treat the team like the Ferrari that they've decided to run into the ground, because they can. They need to understand they've got a greater obligation to their fans, to their communities, to not run the team like a bunch of morons, to not do the things they're not capable of doing just because they can. Why are you doing it? Because you can. Hey, you know what? If Chris Mara is such a good personnel evaluator, why aren't the Bears calling and, and asking uh, for permission to interview him to be the general manager of the team? Seriously, wh why aren't other teams hiring these folks if they're so good at what they do? Because there's only one team that will give them the opportunity, the team that they own. That's what upsets me, whether it's Stephen Ross treating the Dolphins just like a trophy that he, that he keeps next to his super yacht if he has one, and I assume he does, and, and this, I just think that the, the obligation is so much greater than that because, because, Miles, and this gets back to the point I made a little while ago, it's a profitable business no matter what you do. You have to try. It's Brewster's Millions, another great movie from the 80s, and I'm sure Miles hasn't seen. You have to try to not make money with an NFL team, and you still are going to make money even if you try not to make money. So it just, it, this is what pisses me off because every team, every fan of every team should have a real chance every year. And what we see at the end of the season on display are the flaws in the owners who either choose to drive the Ferrari into the ground, have no idea how to drive the Ferrari, but are going to do it anyway, or, or just otherwise are going to screw everything up. And, and the folks who pay for it are the ones who care deeply about their teams. So that, that's what bugs me, if you can't tell. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.